The following review for Uplink discusses the game in depth, including many of its gameplay mechanics. Due to the nature of this game, there's a lot of jargon, so please be aware if you haven't played it, then you may not understand much of what I'm about to talk about. Uplink released in 2001 for the PC. The game was the first released by Introversion Software, which have since risen to more prominence with the likes of Darwinia and Prison Architect. It's tempting to call Uplink a hacking simulator, but it might be more accurate to call it a hacking simulator simulator. Although it revolves entirely around breaking into secure computer systems, it's inspired more by the depiction of hacking in cinema rather than any real life techniques. This was a smart move because software security is obviously a complex and very fluid field. If the game had a more realistic basis, it would not only be well out of date by now, but would also probably not be much fun to play. Much of the work in Uplink is abstracted out to applications which the player can buy with the money they earn from their jobs. Breaking a password is a simple exercise of running the program on a login screen. At first, this seemed to me to defeat the purpose, but the more I played the game, the more it managed to grow on me. There's a lot more ins and outs to Uplink than there first appear to be. Although it could never hope to recreate the feel of real life hacking, what it does manage to provide is that sense of satisfaction one gets when coming to terms with a complicated piece of software. The first example for me came after a couple of restarts. Players are required to bounce their connection around the globe in order to slow down any potential trace. The more proxies in this chain, the better, but I was getting a little tired of having to click on these terminals every time I wanted to connect to someone. I wondered if there was an easier way to do this, perhaps some software I could buy to improve it for me, when I noticed the save and load option in the bottom left of this screen. This allows the player to input a massive chain of proxies once, save it, and then load it however many times they like, cutting down vastly on the amount of grunt work. Utilising these little tricks were my favourite kind of moments with Uplink, managing the CPU to speed up my progress, using the InterNIC database to get tons of proxies early on, using the command prompt to delete logs in bulk instead of having to do each one manually. The list goes on and on. The tutorial lasts about 10 minutes or so, and shows exactly how to hack into a simple machine to steal a file. I found it didn't grab my attention much, but I'm not sure how it could have ever hoped to given the premise. The plus side is, once that tutorial ends, absolutely everything else is up to the player to figure out for themselves, and it can be skipped through in about a minute on subsequent playthroughs. Once that's over, there's a huge amount of freedom given to the player to tackle things however they like. I found the upgrade section was particularly interesting for this. Rather than gradually unlocking things as they progress, players are given access to everything right from the get-go, they just have to be able to afford it. Choosing the right software to purchase next becomes part of the challenge for new players, and since there's more money always available in the form of jobs, the punishment for making an incorrect choice isn't too severe. On the other hand, this improves the flow for experienced players, since they can skip directly to whatever hardware or software upgrades they find the most useful. This kind of totally open approach wouldn't really work for a lot of games, but since it provides interesting scenarios for both new and experienced players, I'd say it certainly works well for Uplink. The advantages for repeat players start to add up over time. In my first game, it took me over an hour before I would get to hack the social security database. Now I can usually get to that point within 10 minutes. It's a good thing this is the case, since failing a hack usually results in a game over unless you've worked out a certain trick. Several times I lost about an hour of progress thanks to a mistake when hacking into a system. This keeps the stakes high, but can be very frustrating as well. Most of the restarts I had to endure were because of my own impatience, not scouting a system properly before starting an attack, but a couple of these I would pin on the game itself. The open approach to everything is fantastic, but I felt it failed me one or two times, the voice analyzer being a standout example for me. Not knowing how to use this software cost me a restart. If you start hacking a machine thinking the voice analyzer can instantly grant you access, then you're in a lot of trouble, even though the other hacking tools set a precedent which makes this a fairly reasonable assumption. This makes me feel like the software, which can be purchased, should probably have come with small user guides which the player can read if they wish. This seems in line with the challenge of Uplink, which tests players not by hiding information from them, but by bombarding them with it. There were a couple of other instances which resulted in some frustrating restarts for me. One time, a single misclick undid over an hour of progress, and in another, I was blindsided by a gameplay mechanic I hadn't encountered before. This might be fine if not for it also undoing about an hour of my work. Not wanting to continue restarting the game, I had two options. Either back up my save, or seek out some help online if I was confused about something. After trying the former solution and deciding it probably wasn't in line with the developer's intentions, I decided to try the latter and stumbled upon a strategy which seems to be innately broken in how useful it is. 
The InterNIC database has no security on it whatsoever, so if you hack it you can easily delete logs and it doesn't even try to initialize a trace. Since the people tracking the player need to work their way down the log files on all the proxy servers, this means breaking the chain of logs at any point will make the player impossible to trace. What I'm saying is, using the InterNIC database as the second bounce in the chain enables the player to attempt a hack on a system, disconnect from the target system, connect to the InterNIC database, and delete logs from there. This strategy is extremely easy to execute and keeps the player safe. Once I learned about this and started implementing it, the game immediately went from being too punishing to too lenient. You can start an attack on any system and no matter what the outcome, you remain safe as long as you delete the InterNIC logs in time, which is extremely easy to do. The tutorial hints at this strategy and it becomes a somewhat necessary convenience for some of the later missions, so it's not some kind of exploit, it's just the way the game works. I feel like I've played two versions of Uplink now, one which is high stakes where any mistake could be your last, and another which is much more relaxed. Ultimately, I wish the final game lay somewhere in the middle of that spectrum. I also found myself wishing the mission structure had been balanced a little differently. There are some very intricate missions which become available later on, but the amount of money earned for each hack disincentivizes taking on more difficult ones, since they usually only pay marginally more than the much easier ones. It's a lot quicker to take on five simple jobs than one difficult job, and you'll probably earn twice the money in the same amount of time. This encouraged me to fall into a pattern of taking similar jobs and repeating them ad nauseum instead of branching out more. Considering what a unique concept Uplink is, it's a testament to the game that these are some of the biggest issues I can find with it. It's a very original idea, and taking that into consideration I'd have to say the team did a stellar job with the subject matter. There's some touches in here which are outright genius, like a working IRC client built directly into the game, and easy support for installing custom themes. These both play to the game's primary strength, providing an immersive experience. Since the game frames itself as an application which the player uses to connect to the Uplink network, everything else falls into place under that single illusion. All you have to do is make that little mental leap that the Uplink icon on your desktop actually connects to some covert hacking group and you're now inside the experience. So when you install a custom theme, you're just customizing your Uplink program, and when you talk to people on the IRC client, it doesn't break the immersion since it's just another part of the application. Pushing this a little further, I'd say this even extends to the music. Even though the default music in the game is quite good and fosters an appropriate atmosphere, and even though I normally give a game 100% of my attention when I'm playing it, this is one of the few single player games where I'd say it's fine to put on some custom tunes instead. After all, you're just running the Uplink program on your computer, so there's no reason you can't be doing other things at the same time as well. I found myself tempted to experiment with this stuff, which was quite fun in and of itself. If you're going to spend all day at the computer, you can leave it running in the background and take the jobs as they come in real time. You could even run it in a window and watch a film at the same time. Thanks to its unique premise, none of these things conflict with the game. In fact, it can even blur the lines a little. If you get up to make yourself a cup of tea while waiting for a new job to roll in, then, in some very, very small sense, you're still playing Uplink because you're advancing the game timer. Surely a hacker needs a nice cup of tea sometimes, so who's to say it's not the hacker version of you that's boiling the kettle? Apart from this clever admission that the game is running on your computer, the team also went to further lengths to make it that little bit more believable. Starting up the game for the first time requires a little sign-up process, the tutorial is listed as a program which the player can delete from their memory banks, and even the failure state is contextualized in a smart way, booting the player back to the entry screen and asking them to create a new account. The simplistic interface has also aged very well, making it a very easy game to get absorbed in. I often found I underestimated the amount of time I had spent playing during my sessions. One of the things I wasn't too thrilled to discover was the morality system, which is present based on what jobs the player takes, but I found the way this was integrated to be thankfully very non-intrusive. In the end, it's not a bad little gameplay mechanic, and more interestingly, I'd even say it succeeded in getting me to think a little bit about what I was doing. At one point, I hacked into the academic database and downgraded a person's qualifications, a pretty standard job. A few days later in game time, I was asked to change a person's social security status from deceased to employed. The deceased person was the same person from just a few days before. Right there and then, my mind made a little connection between my actions and the person's death. I wondered if perhaps I had caused it in some way by changing his qualifications. What's so impressive about this is that it's based on random data, and there wasn't any effort made to point this connection out to me. 
I just happened to notice I was changing the same person's records, and before I knew it I had concocted a story in my head based on these few details. I'm sure Introversion expected this kind of thing to happen from time to time, and I think it's great that they didn't tailor the events too much in order to force it. Instead, the scripted events focus on a battle between two corporations that the player gets embroiled in. This is great at fostering that sort of paranoia that hacker stories often aim for, and the unique nature of the game enabled the small team of bedroom programmers to create a story with higher stakes than they would have otherwise been able to. The freedom present in the rest of the game extends to this story as well. Players can ignore it, or even drop it completely after doing only a few missions. Either way, the events end up progressing with or without the player's interference, which helps to make it all feel that much more real. This level of freedom within the story is another thing which likely wouldn't exist were it not for the simplistic way it can be presented. If there's anything I'd like to have seen from Uplink, it's just more stuff. It's easy to daydream about which areas could have been fleshed out further. Potentially, the public access servers could have had little web pages built into them. There could have been more diverse institutions to hack, like hospitals or lawyers' offices. There could have been more mission types. One of the easter eggs left me imagining how amazing it would have been if Introversion's later title, DEFCON, had actually been included as part of Uplink. The thing is, even though it may have benefited from more content, there has to come a cutoff point somewhere. You could work away for years at something like Uplink and never really maximise its potential. A simulation of the internet isn't going to have as much content as the real thing. That cutoff point may have come a bit too early for my tastes, but I suppose it's better that the game leave me wanting more than overextend itself and leave me wishing it would end. Uplink is an outstanding example of how smart design can trump everything. Introversion was just a few guys working out of their homes at the turn of the millennium. Somewhere along the way they recognised they were never going to achieve mainstream success by building a conventional game, so they opted to do something a bit different. Ultimately they took their weakness and made it into a strength by structuring the game in such a simple and pragmatic way. It's a structure capable of telling an intriguing story with minimal presentation, capable of puzzles which are initially complex and hold up pretty well despite their repetition. Even over a decade after its initial release, it's still a very original and refreshing game to play.